And what I want you to do is now, is I don't want you to get too heavy with yourself and say, okay, I'm going to go out and eradicate my selfishness. It's not possible. Not overnight. To remove a disease, health, sleeping, what you eat, exercise, medication, maybe surgery, all must be follow, follow out, followed out thoroughly for potential for healing. If we do one or do two or not all, not possible. If we do all half-heartedly, not possible. So regime, exercise, sleeping, rest, food, medication, doctor, treatment, surgery, we gotta do it all to get well. Similarly, just looking at the medicine that can heal you, but not taking it, you won't heal. You can have cancer and you can hold the medication in your hands and you go and pick, take a picture of the doctor and put it on your altar and worship the doctor and offer incense to the doctor and praise the doctor to people and print books about the doctor and let everybody know but your disease still won't heal. Why? You have to internalize the medicine. With Dharma, people love the Dharma. Buddhism is the second fast gro fastest growing religion in America. Very fast. Reader's Digest. So, so we, we, we love the Dharma teachers. They're fabulous, they're funny, they're full of wisdom. The Dalai Lama's beautiful, he's a man of peace. You know, we, oh, we love that. We love him. Then what he talks about suits our mind. We'll pay tickets to go to stadiums, go listen to him. 40, 50, 60,000 are at his sold out Dharma talks all over America, easily. We love to hear it because it suits our mind because it's the truth. And we put the statues on the altar, we offer incense, we worship. Where does it get us? It's good. It's a step. But to actually take the teachings and check our minds makes a big difference. And then applying it. That means, what does applying mean? Now you know what is the cause of your problem. Now you know. The next time you want to act in a way you know will not bring you benefit in other people and you still act it. Then you're just holding on to the medicine you like and not taking it. But the next time you know now this action will bring you unhappiness and you fight it and you fight yourself to not do it again, then you're taking the medicine, you're on your way to healing. So the first pill, the first chemotherapy will not heal your cancer, but if you continue. So if you give up, give up your chemotherapy, it's pretty much giving up your life. So if you give up your Dharma practice, you pretty much give up happiness. Why? It's not acceptance or giving up of Buddhism. It's acceptance and giving up of what creates unhappiness for you, which is selfishness. So when you give up the practice of destroying selfishness, you pretty much have resigned yourself to being unhappy. So here the issue is not you accept Buddhism and you tell everybody, oh, I can't give up Buddhism, you know, I'll go to hell if I do. It's not about that. You can practice Buddhism without being a Buddhist. It's about your actions. It's about the results. And it's about the mind that creates that. So when you give up attacking and changing that mind, pretty much you have to expect and resign to a lot of unhappiness. So we think, before I enter Dharma, how's my life been? Has it been peachy and wonderful? And I've made better and better for myself? Materially, maybe I did all right, but mentally, am I growing or degenerating? Mentally. Am I growing or degenerating? That's how we must think. So therefore, admiring the doctor, the Buddha, keeping the medicine near us, the, the Dharma, and praising the nurses, the Sangha, will never heal our disease. We have to internalize it. We have to sleep, rest, go for treatment, take medication, surgery, follow the doc good doctor's orders, then the chances of healing is very high.
Therefore, we must listen to the Dharma, follow our teacher. Follow our teacher doesn't mean physically follow everywhere. Follow means the teachings you have received, internalize. Your teacher can be passed away, you can still be following your teacher very devotedly with a strong Guru devotion. Because following your teacher is not a physical following. And, and, whenever an afflictive emotion arises within you, face it and firmly avert it. It is very hard. Do you know why it's very hard? Because you trained yourself very well. <laughs> That's all it is. So it's just a matter of retraining. Look, if, I, if we don't go to the gym for 20 years and suddenly we go, it's very painful. But after a few months, it gets better. So the mind, same thing. Your mind is not 20 years out of the gym. Your mind has been hundreds of years out of the gym. Because if you've been practicing Dharma, strongly you would have found Dharma much earlier and started much earlier. Results resemble the cause. Very simple. So therefore, today you have received some Dharma talk. It is from my heart. It is something that I've learned from my teachers. And you are alert, comfortable, able to receive. What's your job now? Think about it and apply it. For me, religion is simple. It's not about who's superior and who's right and which is the right God. For me, religion is if you're kind and compassionate and tolerant, you're religious. If you're not, you can argue until the end of time whose God is real and whose religion is real. In the end, we just blow each other up. So for me, religion is simple. It's not about who's right and wrong. It's about what's your result? What is the result of your religious practice? Some people say, I don't need religious practice. I don't need religion to be a good person. That's true too. I accept. I accept and I believe. Because there are very good people without religion. Then you say, then why do you teach us religion at all? Because it's different for everyone. Some people need religion to become better. Some people don't. Some people need this religion. Some people need that religion. It's up to us. That's why I don't judge which religion is better or if religion is necessary at all. Hence, Buddhism can be a way of life. What's a way of life? To live our lives for others. Whether we accept the Buddha or not, the teachings remain the same. Whether we accept a Buddha or not, the teachings remain the same. If we accept the Buddha, the teachings become our potential, meaning we will become a Buddha. If we don't accept the Buddha, then we cannot accept the Buddha within us. If we cannot accept an outer Buddha, we cannot accept an inner Buddha exists. If we cannot accept the inner Buddha exists, we cannot become a Buddha, because we don't accept it can exist. Hence, when we practice Buddhism as a way of life, we make our lives happier, but we don't become a Buddha. When we practice Buddhism as a religion and accept the Buddha, then we accept the Buddha in us. What's the Buddha in us? the real potential in us <coughs> to be a Buddha. Everybody understand that? I will transform my mind. I will be the most beneficial person for others. I will use my life for others. I will accept hardship for others. And I will accept difficulty for others. Though I will complain from time to time, I will still do it and I will train my mind to do more. I will do this in order to transform my mind into a fully awakened state of a Buddha, <clears throat> so I may become a Buddha to be of even more benefit to others. Therefore, I do these, pra I do these practices. One. Second, I will do these practices and transform my mind because I have made myself and others unhappy, and I wish to live the rest of my life happily and I wish everybody around me who comes into my presence to go away happy. Therefore, I will practice these teachings. Two motivations. The first one is when you accept Buddha in practice. The second one is when you take it as a way of life. Of course, accepting a Buddha and practicing is superior because why? It doesn't lead to a happy mind. It leads to, only it leads to enlightenment. That's the difference. So Buddhism is very, very versatile. Very. Buddhism is the only is the only iconography, it's the only image or iconography you can put everywhere that denotes peace. People put Buddha in gardens, people put Buddha in bars and clubs, Buddha bar. In Singapore I was I was amazed there was a Buddha bar. 
One of my friends brought me in. There's Buddhas everywhere. Very nice ones. I wanted one for my altar. Anyways, it was a Buddha bar. But what is the no peace? So it can be a way of life or religion.